Hey everyone, and welcome back to Heart Breathings for our June notebook challenge. I am so excited to share with you some of my plans for these notebooks and to be pulling some notebooks out of my closet that I've had for a while. And we have a nice Kate Spade notebook giveaway for today as well. So let's get started. Okay, so the first notebook that we're gonna talk about is this dot grid notebook with a lay flat blind binding from Hunter Paper Co. So this is a UK family run company and I got this lovely notebook from Kat and I've had it for a while and I've been wanting to use it and just haven't really had a purpose for it that I, you know, sometimes when you get a special notebook, you feel like, you really want to give it a special use so that you use it all the way through and you really dedicate yourself to it. And, you know, while we're going to talk about that, I had someone say they're confused about what the notebook challenge is. So let's just go over it for those, any of you who are new here. So this started a few years ago with a, basically a clean out of all of my notebook collection. So I will link that video down below as well as a video I did recently about my notebook closet and things like that. But I have lots of notebooks because I love them. And I know that so many of you are like me in that you collect notebooks, you can't resist them when you go to a bookstore or any place that has some beautiful notebooks. But then often when you get home with them, you do exactly what I was just saying. You s decide that there's no special reason for it. This notebook is too special to write in. You're scared you to mess it up. You want to give it the perfect like use and... So the notebook challenge is really about just challenging you to go into that notebook collection that you have and really decide on a use for it and love those notebooks and use them and stop worrying so much about it has to be the perfect use. I have to finish it all the way through or it's not worth it or I'm going to mess it up and just try to let go of some of those fears and instead really get the joy out of these notebooks because I'll tell you something that has happened to me is I had some notebooks before that I had purchased like let's say almost a decade ago that I really loved and I never used them because I wanted them to be special. I felt they were special. And then over time, those notebooks either got damaged or they suddenly became not my style anymore. And I moved on to different kinds of styles of notebooks. And those ones that I felt were so special years ago are no longer as special to me just because I moved on from that style. And then I never got to really use them and now they'll never get used. So then I ended up just giving them away to other people or donating them. And it just is, you know, even though it's good to be able to pass them on to someone else, there's a piece of me that feels sad and has a little bit of regret over not just using that notebook when I first got it because I would have enjoyed it so much at that time. And instead, I let my own fear and hesitation hold me back and perfectionism. So this is one of those notebooks that I got as a gift from one of you in our community cat and I've been wanting to use it for a while. So I am pulling this out because I have just recently bought a large stack of new story and plotting books. So nonfiction books about how to write. I also have never made my way through Save the Cat Writes a Novel. So I wanted to make my way through that. So I'm making it part of my morning routine to just read at least one chapter of a writing book. And what I love to do with writing books, I love to get them in paperback form instead of ebook so that I can highlight and tab things and stuff like that. But I also find it super helpful as a companion to any nonfiction book that I'm reading that I want to remember pieces of it to have a notebook where I can collect all my thoughts on that particular subject. I've done this before with other subjects that I was studying, and I've done this before with my writing books that I've studied. But now that I have this whole fresh stack of new books, and if you guys want to see what those books are, let me know in the comments, um, because maybe I can do a like my favorite books on writing and which ones I'm currently reading kind of video coming up. But as I make my way through that stack of new writing books, I want to keep the main ideas and the main takeaways that I have from that book here in one location. So I can probably track, you know, I don't know, probably more books than I currently have, but I could probably track notes in this large notebook. This is 304 sheets. I could probably track, you know, 
50 books on writing or what I've learned about writing from videos in this one book. And then that, that way, instead of having to pull out all 30 books to remember what I learned, I just have this one place where I've collected all my favorite notes from it. And this kind of notebook is the perfect kind because it is a fl lay flat binding, which I prefer and really love. It also has this nice, like small dot grid, the pages are numbered, and it has this section that says date and subject. And so this would be perfect to be able to put the title of the book here. And then I can add my own tabs. And then over here where it says date, instead of using this for um, this column for date, I can put what chapter it came from in the book. And then I can put my notes over here to the side. And I really like that as a study guide to be able to put the title of the book here chapter one, chapter two, whatever it is, and then all my notes from chapter two, and then chapter three, and all my notes from chapter three. And then in the beginning of this, there is also a contents or an index. So what I could do is I could put, you know, the first book that I'm reading, put it here and say it goes from pages one to page 57. And then the second book that I'm reading goes from 57 to 62, you know, or whatever. So I'll be able to track it so that when I'm coming back to these notes later, I can be like, oh yeah, I want to go and see what Save the Cat Writes a Novel says about this. I can easily and quickly turn to the right page. So this seems like the perfect notebook. And this again is a UK company called Hunter Paper Co. So I will see if I can find a link to this, but thank you again, Kat, for this. And just since we're talking about gifts that have come from fans, I know many of you have been asking me um, over the past several months when I was getting a new address for my house in Texas or for our life in Texas, because you've still had my old South Carolina address. And I'm happy to say that I did go through the process of getting a new box. So that address is down below for you. If you do have something for me, definitely never expected, uh, but always appreciated. So for those of you that have asked, that new address is down below. We're going to be going through and updating all my old videos with the new address. So very exciting to be officially uh, here in Texas and taking mail. I've talked about this one before, so this will be brief because I don't really have anything new to share, but this is an Archer and Olive notebook that was a limited edition that I ended up getting in a buy sell trade group for Archer and Olive because I really wanted this purple like lunar moth one, but I've really spent some time setting up the quotes and other things that I want to go in here. And this is going to become my new story journal where I'm going to be tracking all of the books that I'm reading, all the stories I'm consuming through games or anime or short form, anything that I'm consuming that gets my ideas. I'm also going to be putting my series ideas in here for what series comes next after I'm done with my current series, which not going to be happening anytime soon. So anytime I get a new idea, I want to capture it somewhere because I've got probably at least a year of writing before I'm ready to start a new series. And so I'm going to track all of that stuff in here. So I'll be tracking my movies and other stories. And the, the point of this, even podcasts and things like that, um, the point of this notebook is going to be really to help cultivate my own creativity and my own ideas, kind of like a way of triggering to my mind that I am open to to new ideas and I am excited about the stories that are coming. And I can also track in here what stories I like, what things I don't like about how authors handled certain stories, what books I'm reading, how much I admire certain authors and why, um, different tricks authors play with your mind and how I enjoyed that, just all those types of things. So I will be recording a video in June of me setting up this story journal. And that will kind of go hand in hand with a new series of videos I'm going to be doing on how to write scenes that keep your readers engaged. So that will all be coming as new content in the month of June, which I can't wait to share. Okay, so <laughs> don't judge y'all, please don't judge. I know some of y'all have big packs of notebooks as well. So Erin Condren, one of my favorite planner companies, released uh, what, about a year ago or maybe a year and a half ago, released a collab with Hello Kitty. And they had two different soft bound notebooks. So you've got this gold one and it has a cute little Hello Kitty face in here. It's the same design as that. And then it's basically just lined pages. And this one is the same, except it has this really nice rose gold foiling of a bow. And then it's also lined notebook inside. And I 
sort of went a little bit nuts. When they first came out, I bought one, but then they've had two warehouse sales since then. And each time these notebooks have only been $5 and $5 is a steal for the quality of these notebooks. But this is another scenario where it's like I have hoarded them. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have two more. So I have eight of these. Is it two? Uh, oh my gosh, I have four more. I just looked back on my <laughs> on my shelves. So I have six plus, I have 10. I have 10 of these notebooks. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six of these rose gold ones. And I was really going through my notebooks the other day and I was thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with these? Because I really love them and I don't want this to be the kind of thing where I let them sit for years and years and never use them. And then I feel guilty because my style has changed or you know, I no longer like this type of notebook or whatever. So I'm gonna use them. But one of the things that I think is an opportunity when you have a lot of notebooks that are the same size and style is that you get a chance to maybe put the same kind of thing in it, like a journal, you know, to keep your journal in all the same notebooks. And then when they're completed, you can line them up on the shelf and they kind of become decor for your room. And I really like that idea, but I've never really stuck with it in the past. So I was trying to think of some ways and I did ask over on my Instagram, which is at heart breathings, if you want to come follow me there. And if you enjoy the notebook challenge and decide that you're going to take it on and use some of your own notebooks for any purpose, journal, journaling, story notes, whatever it is, please tag me over there with hashtag HB notebook challenge and show me your notebooks. I would love to see them. But I asked over on Instagram and so many good ideas came through, like maybe having one set of notebooks that becomes letters to my daughter that she can read when she's older, which I really like that idea. Um, another one was to keep track of my plants and things like that. But what I think I've decided to do with this is at least these white and gold ones are going to become my manifesting notebooks. And so basically what I'm going to do in this notebook is this is going to be a journal of my biggest wildest dreams and goals and things that I want to bring into my life. And my rule about these notebooks is going to be there's not a single negative thought allowed into this, not because it's not reality, but just because this is a place where I'm going to pour my hopes and dreams and I'm going to believe that they can come true. So it's going to be some future casting or future journaling, maybe letters from my future self to me, which is an exercise we do in some of my courses. And it's going to be, I'm going to put in sort of like vision boarding. I'm going to put in stickers and um, images like photos of things that I want to bring into my life. Like, let's say, um, I really, really want a specific <laughs> Louis Vuitton purse and it's discontinued and I really want it. So maybe like cutting out a picture of it and putting it in here and talking about how it will feel to carry that purse and the reason that I want it and how I can see myself carrying it and just being excited about someday having that purse and being able to raise the money for it and just loving it for the rest of my life, you know, stuff like that. And then having another page maybe where I'm thinking about how I want to manifest a vacation to a really nice place and put, posting pictures of that resort and talking about all the fun things that the kids would get to do there and why I want to go and how much it's going to cost and how I'm just going to feel so excited when that money is in my bank account. And th so that's what I'm going to do with this. And I'm hoping that over the years, I will be able to look back and say, oh my gosh, remember when I wanted that thing and then be able to actually look up and I have it or be able to look at those photos of this amazing thing that we manifested into our lives. Now, I know that some people don't really believe in manifestation and that's totally cool, um, but I am a firm believer in signs and synchronicities and how really what you believe that you are heading toward leads you down the path toward getting it. So having that vision and dream. So all, these are almost going to be like vision board notebooks. I kind of like that thought. Um, and whether you consider it manifestation or you consider it just a goal notebook, it really doesn't matter. But I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm hoping that someday I'm going to be able to share with you guys that I have an entire used like notebooks where I can open any page and talk about how that thing or that experience or that feeling or that way of being 
actually came to life. So this will be filled with affirmations and fun stuff like that. So I will share that with you as it starts to get set up. Now, in terms of this other notebook, I still don't have a specific use for it. I was thinking that I probably will save back one of each one for Evie for whenever she wants to use it. And who knows <laughs> if they end up having another warehouse sale and these go back down in price to like $5, maybe I'll pick up a few more. Um, but I think that I will at least save one back for Evie. And I do really love that idea of keeping some kind of journal toward her of like things that I've learned or advice for her in the future. And maybe even one for Andrew as well, but maybe not a Hello Kitty notebook, but just maybe they do have like Star Wars notebooks and different things like that. I should see if they have a Darth Vader one because he really likes <laughs> Darth Vader. But I know there's a new Jurassic World uh, collab with uh, Aaron Condren. So I might look and see if they have any softbound notebooks because he also loves dinosaurs and stuff. And uh, even though Jurassic Park is a little bit too scary for him, I think he would enjoy that. So keeping a notebook for each of my kids that I just write things that I think about what they say and um, memories and things like that, I think is such a great idea. By the way, I always put links to as many things as I can um, down below in the description box if you want to check it out. But these are from Cloth and Paper, and these are part of her leather agenda collection. So these are not ring binders. I, I do have the black croc that she carries in a ring binder, but these are just agenda covers, meaning that they just have pockets for you to slide like a happy planner or a notebook inside of it. And then they've got pockets here. And this is a kind of like a pebbled leather with a chevron pattern and it's really, really beautiful. And I was previously, I've had this one for a while and I have these lovely dragonfly discs and I had put this notebook together to be a notebook for the Manifestation Babe Academy course, which I guess I'm talking about manifesting a lot today because it's been on my mind a bit. And what I found was even though I loved this notebook, this half letter size is just too small for those kinds of notes for that particular course because I had so much to put in it. So I kept having to pull pages out and replace them. And then it just it just wasn't working as well. And since we got on the road, I ended up kind of falling off the wagon in terms of going through that course. It's a 20 week course. So it lasts almost six months. And so it just was a lot to get through when we weren't settled. So I'm recommitting to going back through that class. And so I bought this gorgeous new happy planner size agenda cover from cloth and paper. Now this is pricey, but it, the quality of it is just so delicious. So if you're looking to reward yourself with something and you enjoy the classic happy planner size, this is a new size that she's offering in her shop and I had to grab it. So I ended up taking the discs. Let me see if I can pull this out a little bit. These are half moon discs with like purple. They're purple with a little bit of glitter on them. These came out of the like stargazer box that she had. They had with Happy Planner this past year. I think in like January or some sometime or maybe the end of last year. And so I used those to create my own new notebook. And I bought quite a bit of stuff from cloth and paper. I also got this new Cappy Planner cover off of a shop from Etsy, I think called Glam Girl Planners. I'll link that below and you can get it customized with your name. And then I have this little Ollie clip that matched the cover. And then I just made this, what is desired by me is destined for me in Canva. And I actually made a lot of these things in Canva. Keep expanding. I grabbed these little purple flowers. I made this I am worthy and this shine. And I just put this, I actually bought from another shop, Magical AF. And then I also have these beautiful new color page flags. And then I have a bunch of these. I also got this full set of colorful dots. I think these are like lilac. I can't remember exactly the color, but they sort of matched with this little palette here. And so I'm going to use these in my notes. And so I've got these little things in the front. And then the tabs that I have, well, some of the things that I purchased from cloth and paper are this inbox. So this is a heavy plastic piece. And I got these other page flags from cloth and paper. And this isn't all of them. I just took a small stack and put them on the back here. 
and you can write on these with Sharpie pen. So I was thinking this would be a good place in the inbox for me to write any to-do list type things or which video I'm working on next or any thoughts I had about stuff to work on regarding the course. This is a photo that was taken of me at the uh, mastermind in Chicago that I really liked. And so I put that on here as well. And then I also have printed out some of the workbook and uh, instructions. I didn't print out all the workbooks because I'm doing those mostly on my iPad, but I did print out a few of the things like the schedule and different stuff like that from the course and put them in here. And to print this out, I used the letter size that she gives us the PDF and then I printed it at 82% and you can do 83 or 84% also, but I like to have a little bit of space around the edges. So I printed 82% and then cut it out from there. So I've got that. And then I have these uh, on cloth and paper, she calls these glass plastic. So it's a set of six tabs. And then I made the tab headers in Canva and printed on basically a full sheet label that is a clear paper. So it's like, a, I think I got it at Staples, but it's just like a clear sheet of, um, like a clear label sheet. And then you can print on it and pull it out and put it on top of here. So I made those for each of the main phases of the course. And so I've got those marked. And then I also bought this overlay here that says as you think so it shall be with a picture of me um, from earlier and then I also have a vision board here for my tv series which will be a thing someday I believe and then I have what she calls her time management sheets and then I also was able to grab some notes pages in Etsy that are just printable so this was like a dollar or two dollars to get the file and then I just did that same thing where I printed it 82 percent and it creates really nice, pretty purple or pink note pages. So I will link that printable down below as well so that I can take notes throughout the course. Then I also bought some of these four grid papers from Cloth and Paper. The quality of this paper is really thick and really nice. It's similar to the Erin Condren quality. And then I also bought some just plain notes pages. I think I'm really digging this style of having the side column here so that you can write out like what chapter or what module and then the notes over here. So I also printed out some dot grid paper that I got from Etsy. And then I have another glass plastic and then this luxuriate set. So this is another thing from cloth and paper that came as a set of two that has a bunch of quotes on it, which I really liked. And then over here, I have just a picture of me with my daughter from our trip. This was our very first Airbnb that we stayed at. And I just love it because she's got like chocolate on her face and she's just so cute. Um, so then I also bought this dashboard that says believe in yourself and has also another set of quotes from different people here and a nice little B on the back. And then I printed out this from the digital dash box from Planner Press and just put some happy planner note pages in the back. But this I'm hoping to really fill out with all the notes from that particular class. And so this is gonna go hand in hand with those Hello Kitty notebooks of what I'm trying to manifest into my life. And I would just consider this for myself a type of spiritual practice. So, you know, whether you believe in manifesting or whether you're doing Bible studies for yourself or whether you're studying any kind of um, like self-help books or, you know, anything else, you can always create a beautiful notebook from Happy Planner Discs. As long as you have a Happy Planner Punch and a printer, you can pretty much create anything you want. And that's one of the things I love about the versatility of this type of disc notebook, because I can always just change out the covers or anything else. This is um, the back of it. So I'm just going to slide that <laughs> in there and put it on soon. But isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. So I'll link as much of that stuff down below as I can. I've also been making improvements to my writing notebook, my plotting notebook. So this is kind of this kind of always gets messy, but I, another thing that I bought off of Etsy is this Rose Apothecary cover, which I love. If you're a fan of Shit's Creek, you will reckon, recognize it in a world where you can be anything, be the shit. And then it has the four um, Mora and everybody there. So I just love this. And I also have the same dragonfly discs here, but in purple. And I printed out some calendar stuff for my marketing in the beginning. And then I just have 
all of my story notes. And of course, I left it open on my desk with a little two year old who wrote all over it. So now I'm going to have to reprint <laughs> that. But I have all my story notes in here. So this is continuing to evolve. And I'm getting pretty excited about the work that's going into this. But I really wanted to show you guys this. So I will link those Etsy shops down below because it's super cute. So just to share another couple ideas, if you're looking for ways to use your notebooks, I have these two notebooks that sit in my other room kind of all the time because this one is also from, I think, the warehouse sale, and I think they're going to offer it as a permanent um, thing at Erin Condren, but it's a three subject notebook. So you have a productivity pages, and then you've got a folder front and back and then lined pages and another folder and more lined pages. And I've been using this for my notes with Renee, my operations manager. And I've kind of got the three sections in um, our meetings, anything that I need to remember to ask her or um, you know that we need to do. And then this final one is meetings with um, Amber McHugh, who is my uh, kind of like my business mentor. So I've got those three subjects. So this is mostly Renee, a little bit of Amber, and I'm keeping all those notes in here. And I'm really enjoying this notebook. And just like all Erin Condren stuff, you can take these covers off and switch them out. Um, but they don't offer everything they have yet in the A5 size, but they're expanding what they have available um, over time. I also, when I was unpacking, rediscovered this notebook, which is a Kate Spade notebook, similar to the one that I'm gonna be giving away today that I have not used yet. Obviously I'm giving away one that I haven't used, but this one says, I would always rather be happy than dignified, which is a Charlotte Bronte quote, and I loved that. It has a little pocket here in the front, and then this is where, when I first joined Amber's group, Freshly Implemented, I started taking notes. So these are all the way back from 2018. And so I did actually get quite a bit done in this notebook. I've used quite a bit of it, but it's not completely finished. And so I thought, okay, now that I'm in the Accelerate group, I can start keeping all my notes for Accelerate, which is... Um, Amber's Freshly Implemented has now changed into the Modern CEO, and then Accelerate is kind of the highest level of Modern CEO. So I still have maybe a third to a, a half of it that is unused, so I'm going to try to finish that with meeting notes. So if you ever have like regular meetings that you're taking with people or regular like videos that you're listening to that you want to keep notes on or courses that you're taking. That's another really great way to use your notebooks. So I still, for, for those of you wondering what's going on with this one, this has been my like current journal and I still am very slowly filling it out because I have other ways that I journal. Like I have a five year planner that I put something in every night. I have a tarot journal and I have a six months for life journal and I have manifesting journal. I don't always have time to just sit down and do like morning pages or other type of journaling, but I have been slowly, like when I feel the need to journal, I will sit down and I will write in this one. So it's slowly but surely getting finished and I'm not done with it. I'm just only writing in it a couple of times a month with some deeper thoughts, but I really do love this notebook. So this came from the inspired stories on Etsy, and this is also a UK company. So for those of you that are sad, sometimes that you can't get like the Erin Condren notebooks and things like that, hopefully these will give you another couple options that you can get over there. Okay. Getting towards the end, I promise. <laughs> so this is that Webster's Pages um, cover. It's agenda cover. I don't know if they still carry this teal size, but they do have a couple other sizes or a couple other designs for this one. And then I have a B5 Stalogy notebook with a cover that I got from Salty Katie Co. And I just put a piece of um, scrapbook paper in it. I did not cut it fully properly, but it works well enough. And this is my six months for life notebook, which is really just something that I'm doing for myself to try to track my health and um, change my life in various ways. So this also goes kind of hand in hand with the manifesting, but I started six months for life in April, didn't really get this set up until May. And then I basically failed big time. I followed it for like five days in terms of tracking what I wanted to track. And then I just fell completely off of it. So I have set it up now 
for the month of June. I still want to add some color to this spread, but basically instead of trying to track it on this other tracker and trying to track my sleep habits, I'm just going to let my Fitbit track that and I'm going to instead track my habits. So I've got waking up on time, my vitamins, y'all don't judge me for these icons. They look terrible. <laughs> vitamins, no sugar, no gluten. Um, did I work on Manifestation Babe Academy? Did I read a book, do any gaming, do any exercise beyond just my steps, which you'll see over here, um, drink my water, write and step. So these two are a little bit longer, like bigger columns, because I want to write down how many words I wrote and how many steps I got for the day. And so it'll just be this one page that tracks. And then I want to do some different kind of journaling. I did have one day that I actually journaled the way that I had wanted to inside here where I write um, kind of my meals that I ate for the day and any way that I'm feeling that day. But then, like I said, I think what happened is I'm very out of sight, out of mind. And I put this closed up like in a drawer because it, I was trying to keep it beside my bed inside the drawer. And it's just the way that I am is if it's not literally right in front of me, I forget that it's there. And so I'm going to kind of put less pressure on myself to do any of the journaling and try to just keep up with the tracking. And I'm just going to leave this open on my dresser. And so it will just be there when I wake up in the morning. And if it doesn't work on my dresser, I'm going to put it in my bathroom, which I know sounds funny, but I'm going to, when I get up to brush my teeth in the morning, I will track how I did the day before. And I think that will work for me. So I'm going to continue working in this one and continue hopefully building up a habit of, tr of tracking some of that stuff. And really that is all the notebooks that I'm currently using. I was thinking about bringing this one back, which is a B uh, B6 Stalogy that I used during our trip and just kind of also, you know, hit a point in December where I stopped using it. And there's still so much of this notebook left that I've been thinking about maybe pulling it back. But I also at the same time feel like I have a lot of places right now where I'm journaling and tracking things. So I don't really have a specific use for this one. So I think you know, despite the fact that I have a journal that is not quite finished, I don't think I have the time to be filling this one in in particular. So I think I'm going to let that one go for now and it will just sit until I can find a use for it in the future. But that's it for all the notebooks, except that I am going to be giving away this lovely Kate Spade notebook. And you can kind of see, I don't want to open it because I just want it to be fresh for you. Um, but you can kind of see that the Boulder in the front of this one is similar to the one I had over there, but it's this kind of fresher green Kate Spade green color. And then it's just lined pages on the inside. And it's really pretty. I love this notebook and I would love to pass it on to one of you. So in order to enter today's giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed and comment down below. Literally anything like it can be just an emoji or it can be a, a way that you would like to use your notebooks or any thoughts about mine. I would love to see what you have to say. And before we go, I'm also going to show you our featured book for the month. Okay, guys, I'm so excited about our diverse read for the month. So I'm sure that some of you are members of book of the month club, but it is like 10 or $15 a month. I can't remember exactly how much, but you get a choice of a new release hardcover every month. And I have been enjoying this, although I don't always get a chance to read, I will be honest. But this month's choice that I picked was The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. And I am so excited about this book because I immediately, when I read the blurb, I was thinking of one of my favorite books of all time, which is Rebecca. If you've ever read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, this will give you those vibes. And it was kind of funny because when I opened up the back cover blurb type thing. It says Mexican Gothic meets Rebecca in this debut supernatural suspense. And I was like, of course, because it's so similar in theme to Rebecca. And I loved that book since I was a kid. When I read this blurb, I knew I had to get this book, but so I'm hoping to read this when we go on vacation next week. So um, I'm going to read this for you and I'm going to apologize in advance that my Spanish is not wonderful. So I'm probably going to mispronounce some of these names, but I will do my best to be respectful. So here's what it says is during the overthrow of the Mexican government, Beatrice's father was executed and her home destroyed. When handsome Don Rodolfo Solorzano proposes, Beatrice ignores the rumors surrounding his first wife's sudden demise, choosing instead to seize the security that his estate in the countryside provides. 
She will have her own home again, no matter the cost. But Hacienda San Isidro is not the sanctuary she imagined. When Rodolfo returns to work in the capital, visions and voices invade Beatrice's sleep. The weight of invisible eyes follows her every move. Rodolfo's sister, Juana, scoffs at Beatrice's fears, but why does she refuse to enter the house at night? Why does the cook burn copal incense at the edge of the kitchen and mark the doorway with strange symbols? What really happened to the first Doña Solorzano? Beatrice only knows two things for certain. Something is wrong with the hacienda, and no one there will save her. Desperate for help, she clings to the young priest, Padre Andres, as an ally. No ordinary priest, Andres will have to rely on his skills as a witch to battle the malevolent presence haunting the hacienda. Far from a refuge, San Isidro may be Beatrice's doom. Ah, like literally chills just reading the description. And from a quick look through, it does have Andres's uh, POV as well, which I really like. So I think that'll be fun to read. And a little bit about Isabel. She is a Mexican-American speculative fiction writer and have after having lived in Mexico, Scotland, Egypt, and Turkey, among other places, she has settled for now in New York City, where she works on her PhD dissertation in medieval Islamic literature and writes fiction inspired by her research and her heritage. So that is our diverse read for the month. I will leave a link to this book as well as Isabel Cañas's website where you can read more about her. But let's continue to support diverse authors and continue to read and lift up books that are written by diverse authors. So The Hacienda, I can't wait to read it. I'll let you guys know what I think of it. All right. So that is our notebook challenge for the month. Thank you to everybody who continues to let me know that this is one of your favorite videos for the month. I love talking about how I'm using my notebooks. And even if I don't finish them front to start every single month, that's really not what the notebook challenge is about. When I originally started the notebook challenge, I was thinking it would be cool to pick one notebook every single month and finish it all the way through. But the truth is you can make what you want of the notebook challenge. But for me, it doesn't always work to be like, I'm going to work in this one notebook. If you guys have been around for any period of time, you know that I really like to have lots of different things going at once. I have multiple planners, multiple notebooks, and eventually, hopefully some of them will get finished. But the point is they're getting used and they're being loved and being useful in my life. And I would love to encourage or inspire you to do the same with your own notebooks instead of letting them gather dust. So that's really what the notebook challenge is about. And again, if you have your own notebooks or a stack of notebooks that you're using, I would love for you to tag me over on Instagram at heartbreathings. So so that I can see all your lovely notebooks and what you're using them for. Also, just to let you know, HB90 is now open for enrollment. So if you were looking to join us for the Q3 course to plan Q3 of 2022, it's open. Come join us and you can find all that information down below. I'm so excited for this next round because this will be the first full round of being more settled in the house. So we did, we have been in this house for all of Q2, but really when Q2 started in April, I was still putting together just the basics of my office and everything else. And now I feel like even though there's a lot of spaces in the house that aren't fully put together, I definitely have like my working office space and stuff. So this will be my first full quarter in this house that I feel like I'm more settled. And so I'm excited for it. So if you're looking to really get your life together and start going for your goals and really deciding here's what I'm trying to achieve and break that goal down into manageable bite-sized steps where you're taking your true time into consideration instead of putting so much on your plate that it's impossible for you to succeed. I hope that you'll come join us in the HB90 Bootcamp and I will see you there. We start on June 12th, but registration is open now. So come join us. All right. You can find all those links and all the information down below. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, I would love for you to subscribe. We do this notebook challenge every month and we have some really cool stuff coming up in June. So I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.